Hey guys, Grumpa here. Welcome back to another Nancy Drew adventure. You have me brand new to the channel. I'm playing through every single Nancy Drew game from the very first one to the very last one. And I appreciate you to go ahead and tag along if you happen to like this type of content. I'm trying to get to 700 subscribers as soon as possible. I think we're about 15 away right now. So go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button. It might be tingling down below. I don't know there's some new feature they added, but... Last we left, we were trying to figure out the secret to this train and what was going on and all this other good stuff. And if you happen to hear anything outside, like a gardener or mowers or bass sirens and all that, you're welcome. Parts of living in a city, so I'm going to shut up. We're going to get in the game and here we go. I want to start the very beginning and work our way back again. Engineer, this better be Miss Gerard. Well, actually... Forget it. Mm. We undid the pipes. Let's... You know what? We're going to save the game. See if we can open it up. So I know we just started the game, but... Do not open unless all pipes are connected. I'm pretty sure they are, right? Uh oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, guess not. Okay. Can't go outside until the train stops. Well, I ain't stopping the train. Okay, square bird. But that has to do with the thing in the back, right? Okay, we got the Hardy Boys over here. Nancy, you missed it. Missed what? The argument of the century. Joe, he's exaggerating. Oh, come on. You heard him. They were ready to tear each other to shreds. Who? Charlena and Lori. All we heard was the tail end of it. And unfortunately, we really couldn't make out what they were saying. So you don't know what they were arguing about? No. But whatever it was, both of them were absolutely out of their minds, livid. And it would probably be a good idea to find out why. Let me look into it. I'll talk to you later, okay? You know where to find us. All right, we'll talk to her when we go back. I did get a message that I should be taking pictures with my cam, too. Send them to Bess. Okay. Good to know. So I gotta figure this photo out. Let's talk to Charlene. Questions. What were you and Lori arguing about earlier today? Lori and I? We weren't arguing. We were simply discussing a topic about which both of us are passionate, that's all. Were you discussing her wanting to be a romance novelist? No. And even if we were, that's really none of your business. Facts. I know that sounds harsh, but really, Nancy, eavesdropping is so... Tacky. Listen here, Actually, tiny hands. It was Frank and Joe Hardy who overheard you. Oh, throw them under they the bus, said huh? I should talk to you before they gave me all the gory details. But since you obviously don't want to tell me your side of the story, I'll just have to get the scoop from them. No, no, you don't have to do that. Damn. The storyline that, that Lori submitted to me found its way into my last book, despite the fact that she never received compensation for it. Huh. She's reading the book Plagiarist. now, and when she got to that part, she freaked. You stole her idea. You stole one of her ideas? 
She had no business sending me unsolicited material. But technically, yes. Now legally she can't prove anything, and I'm certainly not about to admit He just did. And it's not as if she needs the money. But that's what we were arguing about. For what it's worth, I'm going to talk to this producer I know to I see got a if he'll cast Laurie in his next movie. For years? It'll help ease my conscience, and who knows? She could wind up being a star. I mean, she is blonde. Well, I'll let you go. All right, then. Uh, anything else in here? Oh, wait, we can take it now? Okay. Oh, we gotta go through his letter again, too, though. We we'll search the entire train again. We know the things over there. We already did that. I'll just make sure I don't miss anything. Tell two dolls. Alright. Yeah, delete it. Quiet. Oh, this is the one we need the code for, huh? I assume that's more pipes then. Um, this is the one with the guy doing the ghost stuff. Is somebody playing music? No, he is. Alright, let's go see what he has to say. What's up? I found Lori safe and sound in the caboose. So I guess those vibes you got about her being in serious trouble were wrong. Strange. My vibes are never wrong. What's even stranger is, I'm still getting them. So maybe they're not about Lori. Maybe they're about you. What's up with this background noise? Me? I'm not in any trouble. Trust me. Either you or Lori is, or soon will be, in big trouble. Could you be more specific? Unfortunately, no. I'll let you get back to work. Take care. Well, sounds like somebody's breathing in with the, through their nose and blowing out through their mouth. The little book of samplers. Pretty sure I took a picture of that. Let me double check. Um, everything's a mismatch in here. I can go through and delete the stuff from the old game. What was this? Silver is orange, blue, green, red, purple, yellow. Okay. Map, pieces of paper. I didn't take a photo of this, it looks like so. Clickety clack, just like that. Right, we already played this. Rollmeister, he were giving the doll we call Teddy Everhart a home. Rollmeister Doll Works. Nice Rollmeister sounds familiar. I'll take a photo of this too. Krollmeister. Wasn't Krollmeister the nails place from the last game? She kept getting her hand stabbed. That was going to be her tip. Yeah. 
Thomasina O'Neill. Take a photo of that. You never know. I know I took a photo. I saw that of the cords. Thomasina O'Neill. Close the door. It's locked. Well, how do I unlock it? I need do I have a key? I don't have a key. That, it's all that. Alright, the pipes are still good on that one. I think we're done. Next one will be the what? Detective? Have the note. Let's take a photo of this. Can I call this one Eliza Sandberger? Eliza Sandberger? Right, a photo of that. Received of Jake Hurley for the price of $3.73. One Hulmeister doll with decorative red ribbon on the 16th day of June, 1888. 1888. Nothing else, no pictures. We have the globe that has the tiger's eye down here that we can now take. Alright. Anything else in here? Like a drink inside it? You ever see those ones that have like a drink inside? Uh, check down here, make sure these pipes are still good. They are still good. Bookshelf. We have a bunch from him. Hat. Leaping Lizards. A game that we can not yet play. Periodic table. Camille with Hagar Anderson and Chantilly Hilton. Let's take a photo of this. Stone book, we got it. AG, which we know is silver. Wait, 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 wait. The thing I read with the colors. What was that? Uh, let me delete some of this stuff. Delete. Delete, delete, delete. Silver is orange, blue, green, red, purple, yellow. Okay. Orange, blue. Did I just need to do orange first? Blue. Green. Red. I don't know if this will work, but for the shot. Is that all the colors it looks like? Purple? Yellow. Yellow. What is this? Wilson Carbide and Acetylene Works. Dear Jake. 
Lord sent you two lambs which you should receive by the new one to get them simply place carbide in the lower chamber water in the upper chamber use the built-in flint lighter to ignite the jet gas which results as you see the carbide lamp is an exceedingly practical device especially for people in their dark and dangerous line of work I'm trying to get back to my camera there you go Gonna work with that you or I had invented it. What? Huh? Go follow that. Gonna work with that you or I. In your last letter, you sounded quite despondent about. Chum, I suppose it's understandable in view of your failure to strike it rich. I am living proof of. How quickly misfortune can turn into good fortune. Little did I suspect five years ago that my attempt to produce aluminum would instead produce calcium carbide, or that calcium carbide, when placed in water, would release acetylene. Yet suddenly, hard to read this. Yet suddenly, I was surprised, but happy owner of the patent for an inexpensive way of manufacturing an extremely flammable gas. Photo. I need to go back and clean out all the photos. I was pretty sure I have photos in here of my lap or first games too. Just as I was becoming wealthy and when I sold that patent, I have no doubt that you too will someday be handsomely. Always your friend, Thomas Wilson. Rewarded for your efforts. Continue to keep me appraised, apprised of your adventures, dear friend, and never ever give up. May the lamp kinda like you two. Never give up. Just keep grinding. May the lamps I sent you soon light your way you see. Always your friend, Thomas Wilson. Click on clack. Looks like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Oh, Maybe hell I yeah. I better keep this. You think? Alright, we you know we need to do that. Whirly's whirly burly. The little lady detective. What do you need? I found Lori. I'm she was the hiding face. in the caboose. Oh yeah. She disappeared because she wanted to see who'd find her first, which is why she left that clue behind. That slug? I mean, I knew that slug was a clue. That's why I gave it to you. I mean, I could have found Lori no sweat, but I thought, hey, why not give somebody else a shot? Right. And you came through. Nice job. Thank you. But look, from now on, if you come across anything that may have something to do with Jake hurling his mind, let me know, okay? Uh, just so I can, you know, give you advice, help you sort things out. After all, the opportunity to work side by side with a world famous police detective doesn't come along every day, you know. How did you and Lori meet? We met at a party in New York. Nice girl. Not a lot of stairs, but nice girl. She seems to have a thing for your eyes. Yeah, she always told me they were... I mean, she told me once that she thought they were very, uh, you know, brown. Uh-huh. What do you think happened to Jake Hurley? He probably died trying to work that mine of his all by himself. But I'll let you in on a secret. I'm onto something that could crack this case wide open. What did you find? Sorry, can't go into detail. Let's just say that thanks to yours truly, what happened to Jake Hurley won't be a mystery much longer. It's been great talking to you. Anything for a fellow detective. All right, dipshit. So we need to find that axe, too. Carbide. Just what I need to make that lamp I found work. Wait, I found a lamp? Is it in the caboose? I don't remember. Oh. He's got a purple 
rock in his butt. That could be one of the gems I need. Maybe Tina will let me take a closer look. That could be one of the gems I need. Maybe Tina will let me take a closer look. What's going on? Do you think I could take a closer look at that cougar statue? What, that cigar clipper? Go ahead, let's take a look. I'll bet I need this stone to build that thing in the diagram I found. But if I remove it now, Tina will know I'm onto something. Interesting. I just wanted to get a good look at it, that's all. What else can I do for you? Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Don't mention it. All right, so we need to come back. Oh, you can hear the blower outside. If you can, I'm sorry. But we need to come back and do the piano. We need to come back and do that. So hopefully it's just part of the process, which we'll come back when it's night at some point, because there's really no way to sleep in this game. be the projector Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth. Whoa! Somebody must have thrown the emergency brake. But the question is, did somebody throw the brake or something? Oh, Joe, now you sound like Lori. Hey, I was the first one on the scene and I saw no one. Who was the next person on the scene? John Gray. Then Balducci came bursting through one door while Frank and the engineer came through the other. Boy, was that guy ticked. He said the train could have derailed. He reset the brake, muttered a few choice words, then headed back to the engine just as you and Lori showed up. Everybody was there except Charlena. I don't think she left her laptop the whole time. Do you think she could have thrown the brake and snuck back to her laptop without your seeing her? Not likely but possible, I guess. The question is, why? What did she or anybody else stand to gain by stopping the train? Answer? Nothing. Which is why I think we should at least consider the possibility that something less human in nature may be at work here. Ah, Joe. I'm going Maybe to see somebody a got on the train. done dusting for fingerprints. Catch you later. More questions? Do you have a theory as to who pulled the emergency brake? Well, I know it wasn't me. I assume it wasn't you, and I highly doubt it was Lori. So that leaves those two friends of yours, Mr. Gray and Mr. Balducci. What do you think their motive was? I don't know about your friends, but perhaps those other two simply thought it would be fun. Boys will be boys. Were you able to find the name of Jake's train engineer? I came across three references to the fact that Jake had an engineer, but I'm afraid none of them included his name. I failed. Sorry. Would you like to see the letter that Lori gave me as a reward for finding her? The one in which Jake Hurley supposedly tells his niece how to find his lost mine? No, thank you. I happily leave it to you to try to solve the mystery of his disappearance. You can afford to look foolish, dear. I, am. I can't. Aren't you even going to try finding out what happened to Jake Hurley? No time. The only reason I haven't insisted that Lori release me from all this silliness is there's always the possibility that what happened to him has the makings of a bestseller. Although I highly doubt it. Why are you so sure that Jake's story wouldn't make a bestseller? His story is an all too common one. A man wanders off into the desert in search of gold and never returns. Why? He either doesn't have enough food or water, or he encounters hostile natives. But why was his train found out in the middle of nowhere with just the dead engineer on board? That does make the story a little more interesting. My guess is the engineer got tired of waiting for Jake to return, took off in the train to get help, and died of a heart attack along the way. After which, the train rolled to a stop in Blue Moon Canyon. Anyone experienced enough to single-handedly run a steam engine would have been quite a bit older than Jake. What do you think happened to Camille? She probably died of something mundane, like pneumonia or even measles. Now, if it was wintertime when she died, 
and they were in the mountains. Jake no doubt kept her body on the train for months before he buried her, which is rather delicious in a morbid sort of way. I'll let you get back to your writing. My publisher thanks you. Looks like Tino's through dusting for fingerprints. any progress in here oh yeah not only am I getting some real unusual EMRs that's electromagnetic readings but take a look at this you've got something I set up a camera and took some time-lapse photos sometimes I was in the room sometimes I wasn't but somewhere along the line I managed to get a shot of Camille where you don't mean that little blob do you yep that's Camille okay you're skeptical that's cool just remember the key word when it comes to ghostly phenomena is energy. That blob is the result of Camille's residual life force, spirit if you will, reacting with the chemicals in the photographic paper. Couldn't it just be a flaw in the photographic paper? Okay, it could be that too, but it's not. Trust me. Y'all believe in ghosts? Let me know down in the comments. Yes or no? Do you believe in ghosts? If you have a ghost story, let me hear it. I'm always intrigued. I saw a bunch of weird glowing lights outside the window of the sleeping car. Really? Actually, I'm not surprised. You're not? They're probably some form of piezoelectricity. See, my guess is quartz crystals in the ground are being compressed as the train passes over them, and the resultant voltage, called piezoelectricity, is manifesting itself as glowing lights, probably because of some quirk in the train shape or in the composition of the metals used in its construction. It was custom built, remember. So it's a natural phenomenon, not a ghostly one? Take it from me. Old Mother Nature was capable of some pretty scary stuff. I'll let you get back to work. Come back anytime. Me y'all going to bed so I can play the piano. Oh, we're missing that weird sound though. You dropped in. Lori told me she'd given you a letter from Jake Hurley that says how to find his mind. I didn't mention it before because it's very bizarre. Lori should have given that to me. I mean, I'm the trained professional around here. Let me take a look. I've seen enough. Two words. Use less. Those are just the rantings of a guy who spent way too much of his life swirling mud around in Panda in the hot sun. Five-star nut job. Lori says she found this letter in a wastebasket. Exactly where it belongs. Did you find any fingerprints on the emergency brake handle? None that were any help, thanks to Casey Jones up there. I told the old geezer not to touch anything, but he went and got his big, fat, oily paw prints all over the place. If we didn't need him to drive the train, I'd charge him with obstruction of justice. Okay, calm down, buddy. Did you do anything else besides look for fingerprints? Of course. As a matter of fact, I found this. Probably fell out of the perp's pocket while he was yanking on the handle. Looks like some kind of thermometer. Yeah, like the kind a certain ghost hunter uses on that bogus show of his. You think John Gray threw the brake? But why would he do that? Because they're thinking about axing his show, that's why. I checked with this buddy of mine in L.A. Gray's got to come up with something real big real soon. Or he's toast. And you can't get much bigger than a train with a spooky past that's prone to strange accidents. Now, can you? Have you confronted John with your suspicions? All in due time. I always like to get my ducks in a row before I make an arrest. Smart. 
You're going to arrest him? Hey, the train could have derailed. We're talking reckless endangerment, attempted assaults, maybe even attempted murder. John Gray wanted publicity. That's exactly what I'm gonna give him. Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Helping people is what I'm all about. My thoughts is he stole it from John Gray. That's just my thoughts. Letter to again. Yes. I hear that Tino and you used to be an item. How did you know that? I'm a good detective, remember? We went out a couple of times, yeah. As for why we stopped going out, you'd have to ask him. Do you have any idea who threw the emergency brake? I know exactly who did it. You do? Well, who else could it be? Camille. None of us has any reason to stop the train, but Camille? She doesn't want us to find Jake's mine, so she's going to do whatever she can to keep its location a secret. She is dead, you know. Well, duh. That's why I know it's her. What's more, your friend that Jim Harley guy? Not Jim, Joe. Joe Hardy. Yeah, well, he thinks it's Camille, too. He just doesn't have the guts to say so. Guess I better get to work. You go, girl. Now you go, girl. Darn. The name of the shoes is so faded, I can't tell what it is. Hmm, maybe Bess and George can help me figure out who made them. Uh, do I send a photo to? So I sent you a photo. Check Hello? it out. Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? The name of the company that made Jake's wife's dancing shoes is too faded to read. But to find Jake's mine, I need to know what it is. Hey, I know what you can do. Take a picture of him with your cell phone, then send it to us, and we'll check them out for you. I just I did. I thought you guys had to paint Bess's room. Boring. Besides, we're going to have to take a break soon because we're almost out of paint. Probably because Bess has gotten more on me than she has on the wall. Anyway, send us a picture of the shoes via cell phone as soon as you can. Actually, I already sent you exactly. a picture of the shoes. Well then, hey, we're on it. Oh, you guys are the greatest. I know. Need anything else? Charlena and Lori had this big, huge argument, and you'll never guess why. Uh, Lori called Charlena a hack. No. Uh, Charlena called Lori an airhead. No. Um, Beth, she doesn't really want you to guess, okay? Tell us, Nan. Well, it seems that Lori sent Charlena a bunch of story ideas, one of which Charlena used in her latest book without telling or paying Lori. Charlena stole something Lori wrote? That's incredible. No, the fact that Lori wrote something that Charlena thought was worth stealing. That's what's incredible. It makes me think that Charlena is a lot more devious than she appears. Yeah, better keep an eye on her, Nan. Talk to you soon. Okay. Well, George, back to work. Alright. So let's close this out. Let's do this two-step thing. Let me pull my photo up here. Photos. Start.
I'm just trying to figure out this photo too. Okay, so one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. The creepy guess Camille liked to collect dolls. Mama. Oh, that's fucking creepy as shit. Okay, just open back up easily. All right, let's go through here. Click off the ones. Still have to do that. Can't do that. Still have to do that. Finish that. Finish that. Still have to do that. Haven't done that yet. Finish that. Check. Haven't done that yet. Solve the puzzle with all the letters at the okay. Can't check that off yet. Can't check that off yet. Finish that. Finish that. I'm done with that. Can't check that off yet. Haven't done that yet. Can't check that off yet. I'm done with that. Does it give the similar so we can see the colors around the drawer? It's me. Got the name of those dancing shoes yet? Still working on it. I discovered this cabinet full of old dolls creepy ass dolls. Loose. Creepy old ass. I'm with you, Bess. They? they belong to Jake's wife, Camille. Jake mentioned them in his letter oh, to Oh, we gotta his read niece. that letter again. They could have been Jake's, you know. I mean, they never had a child of their own, right? So maybe after Camille died, he went a little bonkers. Oh, Bess. Hey, I'm just trying to think outside the box here, okay? Something it wouldn't hurt you to do from time to time, little Miss Note Imagination. You know, maybe I'll just put this paintbrush down, walk out that door, and let you do this all by yourself. No! You've got to keep painting. If I don't get this done by tomorrow, I'll be grounded for a month. I was just kidding about your imagination. It's wonderful. You're wonderful. Very, very wonderful. That's more like it. I'll talk to you guys later. Remember, when in doubt, call. All right, well, I'm sure I will for a hint. Let's read this letter. Uh, that's it. I mean, you know, my travels have taken me all over this great country to town. It's difficult to find. Calico several lives to dodge. 
Experience it in Jamestown. That's how you get the map. To locate the mine on the map, you'll need my projector. To retrieve his name, you'll have to give the dolls an order that will require looking inside Camilla's dancing shoes for the name of their maker. Plus, we have to put the dolls in order. But as for my beloved Camille, she has four words for you words that can be translated into numbers and used in combination with how power my projector. Go to Copper George Clara and pay your respects and let some of her goodness rub off on you. Alright, where was the thing? What the hell? Now we got another rock. That was that. This has something to do with that list of cities Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth. Let me take a photo of this one quick second. Alright. Throw those letters in here. Calico. Silverado. Central City. City. Virginia City. Write this down. Yes, I'm done. Strange. All that's left is a jumble of letters. N D R Z T B A A. Where's that puzzle out here? Is 
next one. Okay. In. V. R Z. T B A A. Mine must be somewhere on this map, but where? Uh, let's hit the save button, and you know what? That seems like a good place to stop. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I love each and every one of you, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.